In this video, we're going to talk about the ignition system and its operation. We're going to use an oscilloscope to look at a couple different measurements and talk about what's happening in the system at those times. I've got my amp clamp around one of the primary circuit controls for a coil pack. And then I've got my secondary ignition pickup attached to one of my plug wires with a ground here where the plugs are all grounded. All right, so this is pretty much what the auto scale function on the Pico scope is going to give me. I see that there's a channel over range um, and I don't get a lot of information from this picture. And so we're gonna start by putting in a trigger so we can look at a single event. So I'm gonna go down here to trigger. I'm gonna select auto. So I'm gonna go down here to trigger. I'm gonna select repeat. I'm gonna select that as a rising edge on channel A. And then I can just take that, I can pull it in place and set it. We're gonna put it on the firing line for the secondary waveform and that's gonna help locate me just on a single event. With that done, I'm gonna go up here to my time scale and drill my time scale down so I can really just look at one event. So here we're getting pretty close to being able to see the whole picture, um, but they're on top of each other. And so we're gonna do a couple things to fix that. One is that we're gonna pull, I'm just gonna grab here and pull down my B channel. I can pull the A channel up a little bit and then we're going to scale them so that they fit a little better. So here on scale, I'm just gonna page down a little bit their 0.7 fits fairly well. And I'll pull this one down to about 0.5. And so now I can pull that and move this. We're gonna step that up to 10 kV so we don't have an over range. And so now we've got a fairly decent picture. We can run the A channel up just a little bit bigger on its scale. And now we can see everything at once. So we're gonna go ahead and pause that. So now I'm gonna take my tool Zoom just over the event and we'll drag it in so that it's not cut off. So here with everything set in place, we can see all the different components um, and things that are happening. And so at the base in the red, let's start there. That's the current for my primary coil. So when the primary coil is on or it's in dwell, that's when I see the on event here. When dwell ends, I see my spark event through mutual induction. Because I'm working with a coil, I expect to see coil saturation take place over time, and so that's why this is ramped. It is common on some ignition systems to see this plateau at a specific point. Those are devices called current limiters. They're current limiting devices on the primary driver side, and so they look to find a specific amount of coil saturation and then hold at a level current until spark occurs. In the blue line then, this is my secondary ignition waveform. This is something that there's a lot of information about online, and certainly I'm still a student of it and still working through the best ways to analyze this and apply it in different methods. As you put that with the coil unplug systems and using a COP wand, like this one here for the PicoScope, some of that changes even still. So to look at this, what I'm looking at in this area here matches my current. And that's why I like to look at these together and give students the perception and understanding of this current event on my primary side is what has created everything here on the secondary side. And so I see these line up, right? This is my dwell time. At the end of dwell, I see a spark plug fire. This is my firing line. And so I expect to see that to be a relatively high voltage that voltage amount in itself is going to tell me something about what's going on in the cylinder. Especially if I'm looking at multiple cylinders on a vehicle, if I've got one that is substantially different than the rest, that could tell me something about the fuel mixture or the compression ability of that cylinder. And so there's a lot to be learned just in that. Our trainer board here, the spark plug's being fired in open air. And so we're seeing between five and 7,000 kilovolts based on the engine speed or rotational speed of this trainer board. This firing line then also works with my spark line. So I see the initial voltage it takes to jump the gap at the spark plug, and then I see the time that the spark occurs across the electrode to the strap, and then here it noses off, that's where spark ends, and I go and I repeat. The initial concept of this that is good to work with is to think about the rope analogy. The rope analogy is that the distance from my spark line up to my firing line is always the same and that it just changes its position based on operating conditions like compression and combustion chamber pressure. 
And so it just mean that as I increase engine speed, the spark time becomes less, but my firing voltage goes up because combustion pressure has gone up. And so I see it get pulled up that way, and then at idle and lower situations, I see it pulled with a longer firing or with a longer spark line like it is here. That's my short video about getting started with your oscilloscope and looking at ignition systems. There's a lot of different tests that we can perform, and there's also a lot of depth just in this simple test of looking at a secondary waveform. There's a lot of great training seminars and other videos online to look at and really get into the details of those things. I've been to some great training on this topic, but I continue to build my understanding as time goes on.